Oops. Oh, gee. See, now we've already got bloopers. Haven't even started the film yet. We've got an accident in the yard. Someone's going in for a drug test. Yeah, I ain't going to pass anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm here again with my friend John. Uh, you might recognize him from the SD60F that we did with Aurora Miniatures. Uh, I think that uh, that went pretty well. I was really happy with that video and really happy with that locomotive. But you bought a second one. You want to tell us what happened with that just real quick? Yeah, my second one. Bought it. I have a feeling U.S. Customs got a hold of it. But whether it was customs or something in shipping, I'm not sure. But my re-radiator fans just don't spin. Hear the sound, hear the motor, open it up, tried to reseed everything the way they have all their pins in there. Still wouldn't work, so I emailed Aurora and waiting to hear back from them. All right, and that's what I would recommend. And I think Aurora would say, you know, take it to them. Um, you know, obviously, if there's a you know frequent issue, it'll come up on social media and online and whatnot. But I think the best way is to approach them um and ask them for help and assistance and i'm sure they're buried underneath some stuff right now they've got more products coming out there's just another batch of containers recently mm -hmm. as i'm aware um but uh, it sounds like you know they've been doing a great job especially working with otter valley to get everything kind of moving along and that's and, where this one came from was otter valley got a hold yep. of lauren first he gave me some suggestions to try of stuff that worked for others tried them still wasn't successful with this model so yeah time to get a hold of aurora and see what we can go Yep, and that's all we can do is try and wait. So um, we're going to be working with Dave here in a couple minutes. I'm just going to kind of give the intro here. So we're looking at some new TF or w, uh, TWF10 um, wall cars. Uh, that, they actually come with containers, but they're cardstock. Yeah, just a cardboard container with yeah. imaging only on the one side. And it's really kind of neat. It looks really cool. I wish it was a real container, but it is what it is. But we do have some awesome container containers here that uh, John and Dave are going to take a look at. Um, you can buy the two packs, the singles, but as far as I know, they're sold out of basically everything. As far as I can tell, yes. I haven't looked lately because I would like to get a couple more. But Yeah, so your best chance is probably checking out some online websites or um, your nearest hobby shop to see if there's anything available. Uh, with that, I'm going to have Dave come over here and have you guys take over, do the unboxing, and uh, take a look because there is some really cool stuff on these cars, and there's also some things you might want to know. So... Let's get into it. All right. Get this sucker open. Love the box. Definitely a gorgeous looking box here with all the details here. Just showing pretty much a nice blueprint setup of it. On the sides, pretty standard factory. What do you think, Dave? It just looks like a good old box. Magnets. Magnets. Got to be good. Oh, yeah. Mm. Steel head. Can't help it. Iron personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very simple to open. There's nothing else spare in the box. You go, you. sir. So, standard, just clamshell flat. But what is nice is that these will stack together with the others. They use roughly the same thing. You can stack them together for easier storage if you don't want them back in the box. So... Carefully try to prop this open. Fresh. <laughs> yeah, these are not, even the used ones aren't easy to open. They do have a little bit of plastic sheeting in here for protection a little bit. So a little bit of factory paint or whatever. Either way. And that's it. Oh, that side wanted to come with me. There is our car. Right. First off, I'll take our little cardboard container out. Free advertising for them. Which, really, really and truly, when you look at this on a layout, you're only going to see the one side. Is it the best looking? No. But it's good advertising. And it still works if you don't have any containers as of yet. But just a little cardstock container. Set that aside. So first off, here's the well car in its whole and entirety. This thing is solid metal. See? Mm -hmm. It's heavy duty. So it's one of the things I love about this car. It's nice and heavy. Got the etched metal walkways. Beautiful detailing in here. Got a little bit of break end here. 
Then when you go over here to look at the brake side here, that is a ridiculous amount of brake detail. Wire and everything. Just absolutely insane. We'll get down to this side. As you can see, this is just this is a late paint, late design. But the ladders, again, I think they were metal for the most part. Almost everything on this thing is metal. It's decently heavy duty. Just like the real thing would have been. And then on our underside, this is where the fun happens. There's your trucks. Coupler boxes. On the ends here, we got the extra brake hose detail, which is why they've snipped the trip pins. This is the factory model. No trip pins for those of you who would like to manually un uncouple with magnets. But all the extra brake detail, same side over here. So this is the brakes, has where the handbrake is. Same thing. Same details. All the steps. So nice little introduction for it. There's all your inside and the interior again. Here's all where your pins will mount from the containers. And those are decently wide. They're not small and one size fits. It's more of a one size fits all setup. One thing I love about this so far that I'm seeing is that because everything's metal, even down to the wire details, is you don't have any of the some's painted, some is cast in color that you get on scale trains or Atherin. Um, I don't want to say Walters. I don't think I really see that on Walters much, but at some of the other brands, this is just an amazingly detailed car with great paint. And like you said, these are the heavy duty cars. These were meant to carry the heaviest containers, right? They were designed for heavier containers. And the way they did it was as containers got longer and longer was these wagon union trucks that were designed to hold the weight on the sides instead of the center. Yeah, that is a unique design on there, um, and they've got more information in their videos about that. But that is a really, that is a cool way that they did that. Yep, and they've got actual roller bearings on the caps, so be very careful if you mess with them. Gotcha, gotcha. Awesome, cool. Well, I think it's time to get this baby on the layout and uh, see how she does in service. Works. Oh, you did that pretty simple. I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> you can see that one's empty. That's part of the scale trans container. Turn the scale trans container in there. That was quick. I hate you so much. But you can see where it can be problematic. Oh, definitely. What was that? My, oh, I forgot. My engine came around and I had all the Oh, Jesus. Scared the crap out of me. No, it just sucks because most of them are going to have to get repaired. Alright, three on, three tries. <laughs>
All right, so we just got done running these for a couple hours around the layout, uh, went around the top and around the bottom and around the middle, and basically threw these at, at the layout, and no issues. I'm really happy to report that even the Walters mainline and the Kato's didn't hold up as well as these. Uh, <laughs> tight switches, tight curves, bumps, changing in elevation, twists in the track, you name it, no issues. Um, all the containers seem to mix and match really well, not only with the wells, but with the containers that Class 1 Model Works made, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, because sometimes, as you know, if you're an intermodal modeler and you get containers from different brands, you got to be kind of careful mixing and matching. Um, not everyone fits. And we did a video talking about that with Dave, uh, kind of do testing everything. Um, but I'm happy to report these are awesome cars. Definitely worth the money. And there's not a whole lot we can say about that in the intermodal realm. No, you really can't. I mean, these are solid. The only issue I saw was potentially shorting out the layout in that couple spots because of the yes. incline and the curve. So we did notice that on a Y on the layout, uh, it was on an incline, over a switch, on a curve, um, you know, with a twist in the track. I mean, everything had the, the stars aligned and the planets <laughs> and the moons mm. all were in the right place. Um but it did short the layout. We're not exactly sure how. We're not exactly sure why. Something touched something that it shouldn't have. But overall, they did great. Um, and it was only on one specific part of the layout, and that's totally avoidable. Um, but we threw the gauntlet at them. We had two cars loaded, one car empty. No problems whatsoever. So with that said, John's going to take over here, and we're going to talk about couplers a little bit. So let's get set up for that and get going. All right, so now as we can see here, we have the couplers. Now, I've, this one here is the factory. So it's got a factory, looks very similar to a KD, but it's not exactly a KD coupler. There's a little few minor differences that are noticeable when you look up closer. I've saved all my older ones. Sean can put a picture up if he desires of a much closer up look of that photo of those couplers. Now, those couplers work great, but as you can see, even this factory one, you're still hitting that detail part pretty solid. And that's just that little brake line airline, airline right there. So I've had to adjust that a little bit and adjust that airline a few times. Now, I run semi-skill, scale head couplers. 
Here is the medium center set shank KD-158s. Look-wise, they look great. I love the closer look. It feels good. But, and as Sean will put the picture up again, you can only go down to about a 26-inch radius without destroying the car. Now, one thing I will want to point out is we did go underneath that on this layout, but that car was also between these two. So it did have a little bit more play because of the couplers coming out and the reach a little bit. But if you had two of these next to each other, I could absolutely see some entanglement here um, because of how close it's coupling. So we didn't have any problems today. Um, but again, that's because this guy had a longer coupler and that guy's got a little bit larger coupler so it can move a little bit more. Correct. And even this coupler from factory is actually longer than this and shorter than this. It's in a really oddball size. So it's a completely custom coupler. This is the KD-156 long shank center set. If for the average guy, if you're switching the couplers, and even if you don't run the scale heads, I would almost recommend switching them out to a longer because this gives you a lot more freedom against that brake detail, which is a pretty solid, feels like a, almost a metal detail piece. This will give you the most swing freedom, especially if you're trying to reverse and push with these cars. That's just my observations. Now, another thing I've noticed, to do the, to switch the couplers, you will want to flip your car upside down. Make sure you either use the cardboard container or put a container in that well. There's enough detailed parts with a heavy hand, you'll probably destroy something. There's no real way, even in a foam cradle, to put it safely without hurting something potentially. So if you're like me and want to be safe, those cardboard cutouts work great. But if you've got a heavier hand, you may not want to trust it. When I did this, I used one of the containers. Worked out fine. I'm not worried about weathering on the top. If I have to, it'll be under a container or weather it and works out fine. But... You just pop that off, that coupler pocket will come out real nice and it'll pull out forward. It actually looks like a regular KD coupler box. As I was say, that looks very, very neat and tidy, very easy to use, unlike some companies. How is the threads? Because I know like some uh, mass manufactured wall cars, even if they're metal or die cast bodies, sometimes the threads on the inside of the car get chewed up or pulled out, stuff like that. Did you notice any of those issues with these? I didn't notice any issues at all. It seemed like these were in there solid. The die was, the tap and die was yeah. done really well on them. Awesome. That's really good to hear. This sounds like this is a, you know, knock the ball out of the park with, uh, with these cars from Class 1 Model Works. Well, the only other thing I would say offhand is since we're underneath, these are, as I said before, roller bearings. Make sure you lube them up. Yeah, it looks like, oh no, it's just the light. They're on there. But that is another nice detail that we're seeing more and more now in these modern manufacturers with the really highly detailed stuff. They're working roller bearing trucks. Um, with that said, I, I would say this review is an absolute success. Uh, we put this next to a Rapido, and honestly, these they just have the opportunity to present so much more detail than the Rapido does that these knocked it out of the park. I, I would absolutely, absolutely buy some. They did. And these are. The quality is amazing. My, If I had one little issue, I would have to say personally, and as much as I love it, it would be that little, the airline, just because of how far it sticks out, mm -hmm. where it sits. I get it. It's exactly where it's supposed to be. It's prototypical. Just coupler swing, and some of them just want to hang down a hair too low. They're, you got to kind of twist and finagle mm -hmm. it to get into a good spot. But once you do, it's perfect. But definitely something you need to be aware of before purchasing. Correct. This. If you're going to use trip pen, if you use your trip pens from factory, they do not come with trip pens. This is factory as it is. I have not touched this car. We opened it for the first time today. These two were ones I've modified. This one here in the middle with the center, I cut the trip pins just to kind of see because if I had the trip pin, that was hidden. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it. The long, you can, you can get away from it. You'll probably be okay with the long center set if you go that route. So, safe to say, from the factory, it'll work, and it'll do well. But I think for a good portion of people who are going to buy a car like this, they probably want to put on the semi-scale, and I think both of us would recommend doing the longer one. It may not be as appropriate, but it'll functionally work a lot better, especially if you want the trip pins. Correct. It's going gonna, it's gonna to function a lot better with the trip pins, and the factory coupler, I measured them up side by side with a long center set, and the factory coupler, the long is just millimeters bigger and longer. 
it is a noticeable difference if you have a string of them. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not super noticeable overall. Awesome. All right. So, well, I'd say overall this went really well. Um, as we just found out with the um, cork in here, which I would say is a little above the rail. Um, but the air hoses are touching um, the road bed. A little um, bit. It, it's, it's elevated up to the height of the track so in a couple places just over. It's, you know, it looks like uh, some, some type of cork or something in there. So it's probably a little swollen from humidity over the years. Um, but it's not like some of the Rapido cars I had before, like the box cars where no. it was just scraping on everything and derailing. Um, it's something to think about and consider when you purchase this. So with that said, you know, awesome cars. And thank you so much again, John, for bringing those here and sharing them with us. And thanks for watching Sean's Trains. And, of course, as always, sponsored by Superior Scenics. So thanks to Dave and Sandy. Check them out at www.superiorscenics.com. And don't forget to check out the new swap meets and shows coming up in 2023, the new Berlin Model Swap. Check me out on Facebook. And hopefully we'll get to see you there. I'll Take see you care. there. Awesome. Bye.